Alrighty, well, good morning, everybody, and time once again for my pseudo cast. And uh, let me re let me preface this by saying that uh, I had just gotten up from a nap about 10, 15 minutes ago, so I'm still waking up. Uh, just I think it's like 3 a.m. It's 4 a.m. right now, but uh, around 3 a.m. I began nodding off, so I figured I might as well get a, like a like a half hour, 45 minute nap in there before I get going on this. Uh, but the the name of the music this is another selection from Iron Cthulhu Apocalypse. It's a it's a YouTube channel that I used to I used to play their music back when I first started making these. So it seems I've gone back to them may, or mainly because I wasn't in the mood to to do any digging and searching or anything like that. This is just the first thing that came up in my uh, YouTube algorithm, so I just went with this. Here we go. And I am probably going to have to check back from time to time, too. Make sure it's not too loud or too quiet. Uh, but I do have a fair amount of stuff to say. A uh, fair amount of stuff I did last night. Uh, I guess to start with, um, basically I wasted a bunch of times. I... I tried making a one-hour pinball video, but the results of that, with the exception of one table, oh, and uh, let me out. Oh, oh, let me stop. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack open a can of V8 Energy, peach mango flavored. So get ready for some pops. But anyway, um, I tried making a, I recorded, or excuse me, I tried recording and uploading a one hour pinball vid, but uh, basically with the exception of one table, I sucked ass on the rest of the session. So, uh, but unfortunately that one table that I did good on uh, was a Star Wars Return of the Jedi. So it had Star Wars Return of the Jedi music which is copyrighted music. Um, this time around, got some bad RNG. And um, so this table was muted on both YouTube and Twitch. So that's kind of a big problem because uh, very rarely does, uh, does, does Twitch mute stuff on my videos. But unfortunately, again, the, the one table I did good on is also the one table that got muted. So, so that's time I'll never get back. I ended up having to delete the video afterwards because it's not worth keeping. And to be fair, I said this in one of my other casts. Um, it, recently, it seems YouTube has made some be has made some strides in uh when it comes to copyrighted stuff. Um, back in the day, YouTube would have just simply uh would have just flagged my entire video and started sticking ads all over. Now, I'm given an option to to mute the offending piece of material, which which they did. Um, I did go through the motions on that. I had them, I had them go ahead and uh, mute the music. But I think the last time I had them do this, from what one of my uh, regulars said, they actually didn't touch it at all. Like the music was still up and running and everything. So I thought maybe maybe uh, I can get lucky twice, but nope. Um, I played this YouTube video back and they did mute the uh, Star Wars music. So, when I heard that, I just went ahead and deleted the entire video. Because I want... Because I want my videos, you know, I want my videos up on YouTube exactly the way I recorded them. I don't want some bastardized version of it. So... So, yeah, and... Those that have heard my other cast know that this is a practice that I've been doing for years. If I post up a video, and if it gets flagged for whatever reason, um, I just delete the video. I don't, I don't do some, I don't do some altered, edited version of it. So, and um, and one of the reasons, and one of the reasons why I just delete my videos is because I don't fancy myself a hypocrite. Okay, I just, you know, 
because I mean, uh, other people's. I really freaking hate it when other people do this on their videos, especially if it's just some cheap ass method. Like some of them will make their video kind of fuzzy. And this is probably one of the mo one of the more obvious examples, but they'll uh, they'll pitch the sound up. They're, they'll alter the sound to make it not look, you know, to make it not original. They'll, I know one, one method is they'll make their, uh, they'll make their video kind of smoky looking and have like a little white dot in the middle of it. Or even worse, some, some of them will have this big old, big old fucking eyesore of a watermark. Sometimes right even smack dab in the middle of a damn video. Stuff like that. I mean, again, if, if you're, you know, I would rather you is mean and cruel and senseless as this might sound I would rather you just get an honest job at Walmart for example than to try to keep your videos from being demonetized by making making shitty versions of them or shitty edited versions of them you know making them like eye sores and sometimes ear sores as well you know you know trying to get around that copyright filter I hate it when they do this and oftentimes it leads to me to actually disliking their video. Uh, movies will often do this. Uh, some video games, video game clips will do this. So, and they'll they'll also have this like, I know movies are pretty notorious for this. They'll have like this big old obnoxious looking frame covering up their video, or they'll have a they'll present their video off center. Have it off center. They have like extra. Uh, extra animation shit in front of it. I mean, I hate when they hate it when they do this. I mean, you know, go get a, you know, go get a fucking job and then try to, and not sitting there trying to keep your videos monetized by making yucky versions of them. I mean, whatever, um, you know, whatever, you know, what are the re, and I've had a few complaints over the years back when I was playing vinyl records. About how about the lo-fi quality of, of the music I'm playing. That's part of that's actually by design. I know, I try. You know, one guy. You know, one guy suggested, uh, why not just record all my vinyl? You know, record all my vinyl on like you know an MP3 format or whatnot, and then just play it back during my streams. No, well, for what? It defeats the purpose of me buying the records, buying and playing the records to begin with. You know. You know, if I if I wanted, you know, if I wanted my music in, you know, MP3 quality, I would just play MP3s. I sure as hell wouldn't be spending the extra money, you know, buying the, you know, buying the records and then, you know, doing that. No, I buy I buy vinyl to play vinyl. You know. But again, another reason is by design too, because uh, if the quality is fairly low-fi, it's much less likely to get picked up by Twitch. You know, my uh, stream vids are much less, much less likely to get muted if the quality is low. So, you know, so there's things you can do to avoid, you know, to avoid your video getting flagged without being obnoxiously obvious about it. Luckily, these days, um, the genre of music I play is a uh, dungeon synth. That always seems to go. Um, that always seems to go by Twitch. They never know what hit them. And uh, and uh, the few pseudo casts that I've done that had dungeon synth music on it doesn't trip the trigger or doesn't trip uh, YouTube's trigger. So it seems to be safe to use. And this uh, dark ambient music here that's playing right now. That's apparently YouTube doesn't seem to mind. But yeah, there's, and there's been quite a few times in my, uh, of all the, of all my, um, all my years of content creation. This, this isn't a unique occurrence. You know, if I post something on YouTube, but, um, uh, if it gets copyright claimed, I delete it immediately. I, I've done that fairly often throughout the years. You know, I would just, 
you know, I would just as soon as delete the video and just call it a lesson learned, you know. And then try to try to work on other methods next time or something, you know. Maybe even not even upload anything to YouTube at all. Like if it's gonna get flagged, don't even bother making it. Don't waste the effort. So, but um, I I've got to move. I've got to move along though. So. There's still some stuff I want to say this morning. Um, but uh, been playing, still been playing a lot of Bloons Tower Defense Six, and uh, this time I bought a, I bought a. Oh, and also, in case I didn't mention this earlier, um, a lot of what I'm saying now is probably gonna be uh, it's gonna be uh, is on my blog post. So, anyway, played some more Bloons Tower Defense Six. And, um, I just now found out that they have a double cash upgrade. Like, you get double cash from all, from all the balloons you pop. So, just now saw that, so... Definitely paid some real-life money. I think it was like 20 bucks for the upgrade. It's But it's gonna pay for itself in the long run, because I have, and I do plan on playing this game a lot more in the future, so... And, uh, and no, I don't I don't consider this to be cheating. In fact, I said this during my stream last night. Um, it's the same reason why I purchased uh, level boosts on some of the classes on Final Fantasy XIV. It's just all it's there for is to help me get to the end game sooner. I don't want to bother with the leveling up process. That's all, which is one of the biggest reasons why I never bothered leveling up some of the classes on Final Fantasy XIV. I didn't want to didn't want to go through the whole leveling up process. You know, I've already done it several times on, on several of my other classes. I don't want to go through it anymore. Kind of the same thing here with, uh, with, uh, BDD-6. Or BTD, excuse me. You know, I don't... Double, you know, getting double cash means I can get to where I want to go quicker. That's where I want to be. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be leveling up as it would pertain to that game you know i i'm tired of going through the whole thing maybe maybe that's one of the reasons why uh i hadn't played the game in a few years it's that whole it's that whole process you have to go through you know i really want to try you know i really really want to try something on this map but due to money constraints i can't do it but with double cash i can now i can actually branch out and experiment it's kind of the same Kind of the same thing in uh, Final Fantasy XIV, and I guess I want to say for a brief period of time in World of Warcraft, I think I think they had a level boost in there as well. But same thing, I've already level I've already leveled up and gone through the end game through legit means already. I don't want to go through it again. You know, again, you know. Now that you can purchase level boosts in Final Fantasy XIV. I'm I'm actually more likely to stay playing the game. You know I'll make, you know, I'll go ahead and try out this class. Now that they have a level boost option for it, I don't have to go through the leveling up bullshit again. So again, that you know stuff like that it helps keep me playing the game longer. Now that I think about it, Guild Wars Two is Guild Wars Two has got to be one of the greatest games ever because of this. You know um you can um. I've said this before on other casts. One of the biggest, one of the biggest reasons why I like Guild Wars 2 is because you can, you can buy in-game gold with real-life money. This stuff like that help you know helps me helps me play the game longer. Of course, I think um, uh, it's been a, it's been at least a year. I think it's probably been at least a year since I played it. So I can't remember exactly what um. What made me stop playing it, but I'm I'm thinking it was just burnout. I'm thinking that's what it was, but it's it's currently it's still my favorite MMO. But even then, I think I I I think that's what it was. I just I think I just burned out on MMOs in general. It's just the whole genre I just got burned out on, because it was a Final Fantasy fourteen for at least four years straight, and then. And then it was Guild Wars 2 for about another year on top of it. I think I was just tapped out on... I was just tapping out on MMOs and wanted to see something different. So... But... But I've, I've said before... 
in the um i do plan as of right now i do plan on getting the uh, end walker expansion for final fantasy 14 but that won't be in november who knows things might have changed uh, before then but like i said as of now i do plan on playing the new expansion on final fantasy 14 But I, I, but going back to what I was originally wanting to talk about, um, this double cash upgrade, I don't consider it cheating. And, and another reason why, it's because it's in the game. I'm not using, you know, unlike Diablo 2, a game I, game I used to hack for back in the day, this upgrade, it's, it's not third party software, it's not a third party mod or anything like that. It's in the game. You know, so it's legit, you know. Same thing with Guild Wars 2. It's not some, it's not some third party, some third party thingy I'm going through. No, being able to buy in-game gold with real life money is in the game, so it's legal. So, okay. Um, but anyway, um, but, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and continue on here. Um, I've also been, uh, those that have seen my other cast know that there was a period of time where, uh, I, I was, uh, I was really into this YouTube channel called Not Just Bikes, and they had a, he had a video series based on a book called Strong Towns. It's a, it's a book about city planning. To this day, I still keep forgetting to get it, but uh, it was basically saying uh, it's basically saying how uh, how this country has really fucked up in terms of uh, city planning. Like uh, all the all the big towns you see, they're basically eternally in debt. It's part of a Ponzi scheme, and uh. And one big uh, phrase that came up, that keeps coming up, is called car dependent suburbia, which, which pretty much plagues this country. It is also plagues the area where I live as well. And um, and it, and uh, and though, for those that weren't around for yesterday's cast, what triggered this was the fact that uh, sometime within a year, I'm hoping, I'm hoping as far back as a year. They're, they are going to be bulldozing the thrift store that's like right behind where I live right behind my apartment complex like I can easily walk to it and up and and often have several times throughout the years you know buying records um I bought I bought um uh, I bought various I bought you know records I bought clothes I mean I work at Walmart you know, it, you know, manual labor, physical, you know, heavy lifting, that kind of thing. So there really isn't much point in me spending twenty, thirty dollars on a nice pair of pants. I mean, again, I work at Walmart, so, and um, for the dress code we have, we, you know, we gotta wear certain colors. But what, you know, exactly what kind of pants or what kind of shirt doesn't matter much. So because of that, there's no point in me buying my stuff at like Target or anything expensive. I could get what I need at a thrift store. So, going back to what I was saying, most of my wardrobe, most, at least my work clothes, were bought at this thrift store that lives right behind me, or lives that's located right behind me. But yeah, um, within a year, they are bulldozing it and they are replacing it with a um, with a stormwater pond. Or actually, they're expanding on the stormwater pond that was already there. Why they're doing this, I don't know. I mean, I said this yesterday, I'll say it here. I mean, where I live, is, I mean, I don't, this ain't the fucking Amazon where I'm living where you get a torrential downpour every hour. So there, I don't see a need to have a damn stormwater pond. But yeah, I... But I started um I started rewatching this playlist. Just I don't know, kind of a kind of a place to cry in my beer, so to speak. You know, it's been a this uh, Strong Towns video series is just 
become a shoulder it's become a shoulder for me to cry on over this you know just some piss poor city planning when really all I'd really want around my neck of the woods is basically another um what's it called oh. there's a technical name for this I'm trying to remember what it was I think it's called a walkway bridge not a bridge that cars can drive over, but just a bridge that people walk over. There's like this, I mean, there's a, there's some stuff that is literally right across the street from me, but yet I have to take this big, I have to take this big scenic route. Like I have to come out, I have to go out of the parking lot, I have to like make a right turn, and then a, uh, uh, or no, I have to make a right turn, head straight into a stoplight, make another right turn, drive straight forward into another stoplight, get past that stoplight, then hang another right, and then, then hang another right just to just to get to an area that's, again, literally right across the street from where I live. It's it's like this big, huge scenic route. But yeah, all I'd... That, but having a walkway bridge would be really nice to have, but that's all I'd really want. I mean, I don't... You know, there again, I said this yesterday too, there's no need to expand the highway. That's putting out a fire with gasoline. Apparently, nobody's, you know, you know, it's like, it's going to be history repeating itself. More lanes means more cars because people are idiots. Or I should say, people in general are idiots. They're all thinking the same thing. It's a herd mentality. Yay! The, they're expanding the highway. <laughs> that means I can, that means I can take, I can drive my car on the highway and not have to worry about traffic jams. Yay! <laughs> And then, so, now you got a whole shit ton of people taking their cars out, driving on that highway now, now that's been expanded. And yet, there's, and yet it's still, traffic shit's gonna get worse now. So. Oh, the fine art of putting out a fire with gasoline. So. You know, and it, it, it for those, now that, that was something else. I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday, so I'll go ahead and mention it here. Um, but I guess, but um, they sometime throughout the twelve years that I've lived here, um, there used to be a Pizza Hut that um that I've gone that I've gone to like used to go to like every week, and um, but some of my relatives, like my mom, my sister, or whatnot, we've had we've had lunches and dinners here at this Pizza Hut, and um, I know on at least one occasion. We've had a family reunion here at this Pizza Hut as well, and but they went ahead and shut it down, and they actually relocated it to a fucking strip mall. Just this little now, you know now it's this little hole in the wall place that uh, it's carry out only. You can't dine in there. I got a feeling that um, excuse me a moment, that uh, I think the fate of this thrift store. Or excuse me, let me rephrase that. That the thrift store is probably gonna be gonna, probably gonna be meeting that same fate. I mean, it's this big old it's this big old thrift store. I mean, it's not like a little tiny little tiny shanty in the woods or anything like that. It's a fairly decent sized place. I got a feeling that that's what's gonna happen. They're gonna bulldoze this place, and it's gonna get relocated to a little hole in the wall strip mall. <clears throat> and I uh, these. And these, and these are, uh, there's a certain word I'm looking for on this, but these aren't, and these are the new style strip malls. Like, you know, the, if you've ever seen like a big box store, like Home Depot, Walmart, etc., they're like that little strip mall that's kind of added on to it, as opposed to say, an old school, you know, like an old school, uh, I wouldn't call it a, for all intents and purposes, I'll just call it an old school strip mall. You know, where, you know, in a place that's actually walkable and not part of a suburb or anything like that. You know, like, where, like, the, uh, where a lot of it's like your, um, your bit, you know, your store, your storefront, your business is on the lower floor and, uh, where you live is the floor above it. Like, you literally live where you work, that kind of thing. It's still, it's, it's not, it's not those kind of strip malls. It's just, you know, big old enormous waste of space type places. So, but I got a feeling that's going to be the fate of my thrift store. Uh, 
relegated to hole in the wall status. Okay, and um, I'll go ahead and also mention, but I gotta close it out here soon. Um, I also found uh, this uh, music, this uh, music making software program that I've been looking for for a long time. Um, I finally found it. It's called Beatbox. In fact, I've actually um, I've did a few streams where I've actually made music with this. Um, it's the only one I found that's comprehensive, for lack of a better word. Uh, but on the downside, it's also very tedious to use because you can't make music by type by um with hotkeys or you can't use a keyboard. Making music is mouse only. I mean, there's a few hotkeys that you use it with a keyboard, but not enough. I mean, I'm probably uh, I mean, I gotta be able to make music by typing it down, at least in part. But uh, I've tried other um. I've tried other music software, but it just it wasn't clicking. Yeah, it just wasn't clicking with me. But uh, this software here, Beatbox, it it just worked. It's freaking great. Aside from that big down bet, uh, you know, aside from that big drawback where all the notes had to be clicked, had to be pointed and clicked on, which again makes it very, very, very tedious. So yeah, I finally found it. So I guess. At some point in the future, um, I'll I might use this more often. I might actually try I might act, might actually try making music with it. I might even I might even try streaming it with it once. But we'll we'll see in the future. So, but anyway, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good. And I, uh, it just kind of hit me. Yeah, this video gets darker. This is one of those. Yeah, it's getting darker and darker. Now they need to make like a 30 minute version of these. There's a there's another uh, dark ambience video that I did. It was uh but it was all a bunch of skeletons. It had this kind of effect too, like over time the whole the whole color scheme would change. Yeah. Yeah, it's darker. Yeah, that's kind of neat. I wish more of these did that, but in a shorter time frame, like 30 minutes or so. so but anyway, um, I, but anyway, I gotta, I gotta cut it off here, so. But thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And I should be able to do another one of these uh, tomorrow morning, which will be my last one for the week. Because my work week starts up after. So. But until then, thanks again for coming by, everybody. And see you all next time.